Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So in today's video, I'm just gonna do a quick step-by-step -step guide how to reframe your Osmo 360 footage using keyframes. If you're brand new, it might seem a little overwhelming at first, but it's actually pretty easy once you get onto it. And on top of that, I got a few tips that will help make your reframing a little bit easier. Now I've already covered some of this in my full beginner's guide for the Osmo 360. And if you are completely brand new to the Osmo 360, you might wanna go and watch that. I go over more of everything in detail, the menu systems and how to capture. I'll include a link to that video down in the description of this video. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get started here. Now there's two different ways in which we can reframe the footage. We can edit it right off the camera, right off the memory card, or we can transfer the content over to our mobile device. I'm gonna be demonstrating on an iPad, but this will work the exact same way if you're using a smartphone. Now I've already transferred all my footage over and uh, for a lot of people that might be a better option just because it is a smoother experience. It can kind of lag a little bit when editing off the camera. So you'll just have to try it and see what works best for you. Leaving it on the camera, however, is a good solution if you have limited space on your device. So I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm gonna launch the DJI Mimo app. At this point, it's when it would automatically prompt you to connect to the camera and it should go right into the gallery once it's connected. If it hasn't connected, all you have to do is tap on album and that'll bring up all your content. And it's easy to tell whether you're viewing content from the local device or from the camera, because at the top here, you can see it says device. Right now it's grayed out because I'm not connected, but that would turn white if I was connected. And beside that, it says local. So local is everything that has already been transferred over to your device. And if you have device selected, that'll be reading it right off the memory card or the internal memory. So I'm gonna pick a video here. I'm gonna select that one there. And the thing is, when filming in 360, you're capturing everything around you in a spherical format. That's what allows you to spin the camera around and get different views. But before we can use it or export it, we have to give it some information, basically telling the camera where we want it to look. And that is the really nice thing about 360 is that we don't have to worry about framing out in the field. We can just start recording, we can enjoy the moment, and we can do all this later on when we're at home. But before we get into the reframing, there's a few things that we may want to do first. The first thing is setting your aspect ratio. Right now, mine is set to a 16 by nine. Yours might be different. It might be in a nine by 16. And we can adjust that depending on the platform we're going to be editing it for. We can tap there at the top. You can see it gives us all the different aspect ratios. If we're going to be editing short form content, we might want it in a vertical aspect. For platforms such as YouTube, we may want to set it as a landscape video. I recommend doing that before you start your reframing. The other thing we can do here before we start reframing is trim the video down a bit. Right now, if you look down here, this video is five minutes and 27 seconds. We may not want that whole video, especially if it is gonna be for short form. It's best to do the trimming now because that's less reframing that you have to do. It's really easy to do. To trim it, all we're gonna do is tap the trim icon at the bottom left-hand side. That's gonna bring up our trimming tool. And we're just gonna scroll through until we find the section that we want to start trimming. So once we get it to that point, we're gonna tap on the scissor icon there, and we're just going to drag the timeline over. As you can see, as I'm dragging, it's leaving this red mark. So anything in that red area is what it's gonna keep. And you can see over here, it's telling us the clip duration. So right now I have a minute and 30 seconds worth of footage selected. Once we're happy with the segment, we can tap that check mark there, and then we're gonna tap this check mark down in the bottom right hand side. So now we just have a minute and 30 second clip to work with. And we can scrub through on the timeline to give it a preview. Now at this point, if we were just to go ahead and export it, the footage would look a little weird. It would be a flat video, but as we're going around bends and different things, like as you can see here, you can see the perspective automatically changes. Now we can set that in the settings, which we will take a look at here in a minute, but that's where reframing comes in because we can tell the camera where to look all throughout the video. Now we could just go in and reframe this the way it is, but there is something we can do that will help make it a little bit easier. And that is direction lock there at the bottom. And what that's gonna do, as I shown you here, as we're going around a bend, you can see the perspective is changing. So if we enable direction lock, that'll basically lock the direction and that'll just make it a little bit easier and less reframing we have to do. So I'm gonna turn that on and I'll show you what happens once we have that set. 
we can set our direction and you'll notice here as I go around the bend it's still gonna keep me kind of centered in the frame there it doesn't always get it perfect but it generally locks the direction and can make it a little bit easier when it comes to reframing now that we have that direction lock set we could actually just go and tap the export button and that would pretty well keep us centered in the middle of the video we don't actually have to do any reframing and if you're happy with the way it looks you can just go ahead and do that however there's other things we can do at this point we could maybe want to set the zoom level we may want a farther back shot or we might want a tighter shot on top of that we may want to spin the camera around to get a front facing view so that's where the keyframing comes in so what we're going to do here to start keyframing is we're going to go to the very front of the video and we're going to pinch and zoom until we get the perspective we want just keep in mind if you have a really far back wide shot you are going to introduce a lot of distortion but for some scenarios you know that's okay because you'd rather have that nice wide shot or on the other hand you might want to zoom right in so you can just pick your field of view just by using a pinch gesture and then we can tap on add a keyframe just where it's that red mark there now you'll notice once we added a keyframe there it added a little white diamond and if we tap on that a couple things we can do we can actually click on it again see how it turns to a negative that's going to delete that keyframe so if we've made a mistake we can easily go in and delete it but I'm going to re-add it here the other thing we can do at that keyframe is set a standard field of view as mentioned we can pinch and zoom that'll set a field of view but they have some pre-made ones here at the side we can do asteroid look we can do ultra wide we can do wide de-warp if we want to get rid of some of the warping and we can even rotate the video which we'll take a look at here coming up but I like it even wider so I'm going to pinch back and have my own custom field of view so now at this point we're going to go along the video and say we find we're getting a little off center there like say the video is kind of going that way a bit we can straighten it up again we can set the field of view that we want and then we can add another keyframe so between that first keyframe and that second keyframe it's going to lock all that information in and any changes you've made to the field of view whether it's a tighter shot or farther back shot is going to change slowly between those two keyframes and I'll show you what happens there I'm going to select this second keyframe we'll put the playhead over that second keyframe and this time I'm going to zoom in so now you're going to notice when we go back to that first keyframe as we scrub along the timeline you can see it's automatically zooming in and as we move along the timeline it'll leave it at that field of view that perspective until we make a change but anytime you make a change you have to remember to add a keyframe otherwise it won't retain that information so now we've got three keyframes now as mentioned at any time if you've made a mistake you can just tap on the keyframe tap on the delete button there and that's going to get rid of that keyframe the other thing you can do if you've got a whole bunch of keyframes and you're not quite happy with the way it's editing you can actually hit the reset button that's going to get rid of all the keyframes and it'll put it back to the default view just keep in mind if you've done any trimming if you've trimmed down the video that will get rid of that as well any other edits you've made to coloring anything that you've done to the video will be deleted now moving along here the other thing we can do with these keyframes is change the perspective so this second keyframe that we have here that's our view it's facing us but say as we go along here we want to switch to a front facing view that's simple to do all we have to do is put it to the point on the video that we want to make the switch or where the switch will end which I'll explain here in a minute and then we just have to simply manipulate the video until we get a front facing view thing to remember though you got to add that keyframe otherwise it won't remember that so now if we go back to that second keyframe you can see it's facing us and as it moves to that next keyframe the camera is going to switch and as mentioned it will stay in that view until we change the perspective by moving the camera around let me just play that back so you can see how it is in real time you can see there it goes and switches and depending on how far you have the keyframes apart from one another that's how fast it's going to make the switch 
So for example, say I want it to switch even faster. I'm just going to delete that keyframe and we'll do it again. But this time I'm going to have it a little bit closer, maybe right about there. So I'm going to move the camera, position it the way I want, add the keyframe. And now when we play it back, you're going to see it's going to switch a lot quicker. You know, so you may prefer that look. Now I'm going to delete that again. This time I'll do it even farther back. We'll change the perspective. Add the keyframe. Let's play it back. You can see because there's more space there, it's going to take longer to perform that rotation. And you can get really creative with keyframes. You can do loops and spins. So for example, I'm going to tap on that keyframe. And what we're going to do is use the rotating tool. You can see we can rotate the camera. Now when we go back and play it, you can see the view is rotating. So you can get some really creative effects where the camera rotates. You know, it might start facing you and then do a rotation to face the front, which can look really interesting. So it's just a matter of going through your video, repositioning it the way you want, setting your zoom level, adding a keyframe. If you want to get a side shot, say, you can do that as well. Add a keyframe. We'll go to the front. We'll add a keyframe there. So you just have to go through and then set the perspectives the way you want. Now, once you have everything set the way we want, we have to export it. And that's going to export the spherical video into a flat video. Now, if we were just to tap on the export button right now, you can see it's set to 1080. So it's going to export it as a 1080 video. And if you're uploading to social media, that's more than adequate. But if you want the highest quality, what we can do there is tap on the 1080 and that's going to give us some options for export. We can export at 2.7K or we can go all the way up to 4K. We can set our frame rate and we can set the bit rate if we want a higher bit rate. If you set it to a higher bit rate, it's going to be a little bit better quality, but it will take longer to export the video. We can add a watermark if we want. We can enable 10 bit color or we can enable noise reduction. Now you're going to notice that when you enable noise reduction, it can't export at 10 bit color. So you just have to choose which one is best suited for the scenario. If it's in a dark area and you find there's a lot of noise in the image, I would definitely recommend that. Again, that will add some time to the export. And then when you're done and you're ready, you just hit export and that's going to export your flat video. Now there are some other ways in which we can reframe the video. Now my preferred method is keyframing, which is what I just demonstrated because you have most control and uh, a lot of flexibility. But the other thing we can do is tracking and gyro frame. But I'm gonna go ahead and reset that, put everything back to the way it was before we did our keyframing. And what we can do here is tracking. And uh, for some people that might be a good option as well. With it, it's gonna keep you locked in the center. And for a lot of scenarios, a lot of activities, that's what you want. And to start tracking, what you wanna make sure is that you have it framed the way you want first with your finger, just move it around because once we select tracking, we can't move it around anymore. So that's how we want it. So I'm gonna tap on tracking and you can see here, I can't move the image, but what we can do is drag on what we want tracked, which I'm gonna select myself there. And then all we have to do is hit start tracking. You can see it has a green box around me. So it's going to go through the video and it's gonna keep me locked in the center. So it can take some time because it's doing it basically in real time. So if you've got a five minute video, it'll take five minutes to do the tracking. If you just want a segment tracked, so say we've got enough tracking information, that's all we wanted. I can tap on stop tracking and you can see it's left this green bar. That's where the section is that we have the tracking information. We can tap on it and we can actually clear that information if we don't want it. And the other nice thing is you don't actually have to track a human subject. You can track cars, trees, rocks, points of interest. So for example, if you're walking, you're just walking around and there's a really nice building that you want to be the focal point, you could actually walk around and select the building as the focal point and the software will keep tracking it while you're walking around. Now here's another little example. Here's an RC car. I'm going to select it. And as you can see, 
it's going to stay locked onto that car and move the preview around as the car moves. Now I'm going to bring up this video again because there's one last way in which we can reframe and it's called gyro reframing. So what we're going to do is tap on gyro frame and with it what we have to do is actually move the device around. You can see as I move the device it changes the perspective. We can still pinch to zoom to set the zoom level. But in order to capture that, to keep it in its memory, we actually have to tap on the record button here. As the camera is playing through, or the video is playing through, I should say, we can use our fingers to change the perspective, or we can just move the device, or a combination of both. It's going to record all that information down there at the bottom. So when we hit stop, it's going to be retained there in the timeline. So anything we've added is going to be in that red area. You can do just segments or you can go through the whole video like that and do your reframing. If you're not happy with it or you want to start over, again, we just tap the red area and we hit clear. So those are the main ways in which you can reframe. We've got keyframing, we've got tracking, we've got gyro reframing. So it's all going to depend on what you find easiest and what your preferred method is. The Osmo 360 is brand new. It just has only been out for a little over a week. The software used to reframe the 360 footage is brand new. So DJI is going to be adding a lot of features and enhancing it over time. And as DJI does update the software, I will make updated videos going over some of the new techniques as they're added. Well, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it had value. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.